Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel, always with you in Sharpiri. In this video, we are going to see two functional functions in Kotlin Word called reduce and fold. Let's get started. So before we start, I want to show you that I do have a newsletter called The Productive Developer. If you want to receive articles on how to improve your productivity as a developer, make sure to sign up for this newsletter. I will be happy to share with you every week one actionable tip actually to make you better productive developer. Okay, so let's get started with our video. So here I have simple main function. I want just to demonstrate something. So let's say we are going to create a list and we will just make it a list of one, two, three, four, and five. So here we have a list of, we will start with the first operation, which is fault. This is the fault function. It's always to check the source code, if you can, or the library, to check how it works under the hood. So the fault and the reduce are called accumulators. They accumulate a certain list into something, into one simple value. So here you say, as documentation, accumulate value starting with initial. So as we can see, it is taking a lambda and an initial value. So there is two definition of generics here, the T and the R. The iterable need to be from T and the return type need to be R. And the return type, we must set it in the initial phase. So if you want to return int, you have to put your initial as an int, as an initial number. And then we do have an operation on the how, the way we, we accumulate the number. This lambda simply takes two parameters, which is the accumulator, which is the return type, and the t from this list, okay, this iterable, sorry, and it must return something, it must return r. We will check the code in a minute here. So usually we use the example of summation here, we can reduce this number into one number called the sum, in which we sum this value. So in order to do the sum, we can start with the initial value of zero, and then we have to define the lambda here. This is trailing lambda. Here, the training lambda, as we saw, it takes two things, the accumulator and the t. We can make accumulator, and as you can see, there's an option here. Accumulator, we can name it whatever you want. And the i, it will be this number from the list. And the accumulator will be holding that value that accumulates. So what we can do here, we can simply return immediately accumulator plus i. What does it mean that? So here, this is our operation, right? Here is our operation. Our operation takes an accumulator and i and return their sum. So what will happen first is that this accumulator, it will get the initial value. So it will be zero. And then we will loop on this, which is this iterable. So the first element in our case will be one. So what we will do, we will apply our operation between accumulator and the element. So it will be i, which is one, plus accumulator, which is the initial value, will be zero as you can see here. Then what we do with this number, we assign this result to the accumulator, okay? So the accumulator will be one. Then we do another iteration. For this time, the accumulator is one, and the second, we have this second number of the i. So it will be one plus two, so it will be three, and then three plus three, nine, and so on. So this will return 15. Yeah, I didn't output it. This will return 15, as you can see, it's working fine. Now, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to do plus. Like, this is completely a lambda. You can do whatever you want here, the way you would like to reduce those numbers, to accumulate those numbers into something that works for you, depending on the business use case and everything. Okay, we can multiply this. What do you think? If we multiply this, it will be simply zero because you are starting with zero. So zero multiplied by every number, it will be zero. You can do multiplication. For example, just start with one, it will be simply five factorial. Okay, so this is 120. And it doesn't have to be a number. As you can see here, it's type R. So we can maybe pass a mutable list. Let's make it a mutable list of and for example, so the accumulator now is a list, so I can do an add. I can add i multiplied by i, and simply I can return the accumulator, like that. That would work perfectly if you run it. This list will hold the squares of this number, so it will be 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. You may say that this is the, exactly the map function, but it is not the map function, this is the folding function, so we can do whatever we want. Like with the map function, you are instructed to return list of something. You check the map here, map will always return a list of something, but here you can return whatever you want. So basically you are emulating the map in here, but it's not exactly as the map, because as you can see here, we are turning specific array list, 
with specific function of the math. So don't get confused in here. So this is basically how you work with the fault. So you give it an initial parameter. This initial parameter will be the type of the initial parameter will be the return type. And you do whatever you want in the operation block. Make sure to return that type and you are ready to go. The other function called reduce, we can do reduce. Here, if you go to the reduce, basically it's the same thing. Accumulate value starting with the first element. So we don't have an initial value. What you will notice in the code is that here you have an iterator, we are getting our iterator. If the iterator doesn't have a value, so this will be something uh, explicit. If you know that your collection, because we know that our collection now contains five values, but in real world examples, we don't know that. We may get like an empty list. If you do an empty list with the reduce, it will guess what? It will throw unsupported operation exception. So that's one of the differences we will see. So we can do the same example here. We can do reduce it to with, sorry, as we saw, it takes only one thing. This is the accumulator and I. You can basically do the same thing plus I. And let's just spread it. Sorry to delete that. As you can see, it's exactly the same 15. So why do we have two functions? Okay, why do we have two functions that do the same thing, which is reduce and fault, right? So the one thing I mentioned is that the reduce doesn't take an initial value and the other takes an initial value. So this is a big difference. And the reduce will start with the first number. So if you want to start with something that is not in the list and then like accumulate, you can't use the reduce. Reduce only work with this thing. So here in the return type, it doesn't have to be the same. So we can basically convert this to a float and the accumulator, of course, also to a float. Here you may notice something that we do have S, which is the return type. And we do have T that is a subclass from S. So here we have constraint on the way we reduce things. So just make sure you understand this thing, right? So you have your constraint in here. So as we said, this is mainly the same as the fault operation. So just to recap, you can use the reduce function and the fault function interchangeably, but with some constraint. So if you like, if you do this here, right? And let me just do start with I. Come on. So let's start with zero here. Here, this will produce an error, as we said. So if you are doubting that your list, let's say you do have a list that's coming from zero or something, and you don't know exactly if it will be empty or not, try to use this one. There is another variant called reduce or null, and that would work. It will give you null in the first place and zero in the second place. Why it is giving me zero? Yeah, exactly, this is the default value. The fault is good for some default values, you can use it, so that's why we do have two type of function here, reduce and the fault. But there are other functions here, or you can check them by your own, and they are pretty simple. Like the concept is the same. You are accumulating objects of collection into one single object with the way we want, okay? With the fault, we can pass anything here. But here with the reduce, the return type should be a subtype of this one, which basically it will be kind of the same because it's starting with the first element. So that's it for this video. I hope you understand the difference between the fault and the reduce. Doesn't matter reduce or not or something else. Okay, there's also other variations here. You can get the index, you can get the right, only the right side and whatever you want. Like there is, like this is the beauty of the Kotlin standard library functions. They offer a lot of default operations you can use right away. So that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter and also don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much and see you in the next videos. Assalamu alaikum.